sure you are still there. All right, it says we're rolling, Spicely. We're fucking, <laughs> we're fucking going for it right now. <laughs> Hell yeah! Officially. Yeah, first dude. It's been a long time. It's been years. I feel like since we've seen each other. Good to see you. It's good to see you too, man. I can't remember the last time we saw each other. I feel like it was a uh, like a skate park or something. I don't know. Had to have been skating for sure somewhere. Yeah, it was skating somewhere, but I don't remember where. I, it was I, a long time. Yeah, I kind of wanna. Let's start with what, what you're up to now, like, because I haven't seen you in a long time. So where are you right now? What are you up to? Uh, right now, I'm, like, kind of been living between Vegas and Montreal, um, fighting in the UFC, which is pretty crazy, uh, and just kind of living the dream, you know? It's, uh, it's a lot like skateboarding in a, in a way, like, you kind of, you just get paid to do what you love, and you can travel the world, and, and uh... Yeah, I don't know. It's it's a it's a pretty crazy life for sure, man. I'm sure as you know, being a pro skateboarder and all. Yeah, I imagine it's very similar to skating in the sense that there's a uh, a lot of risk involved as far as career and injury and stuff like that. Yeah, man. I mean, it's definitely uh, you know it's not certain at all for sure. Uh, there's no job security. You know, it's all about what you've done lately, and you know you're winder away from it being all over, you know, you blow your knee out, you, you sit out for a year, like as an athlete, as a skateboarder, you know, that sets you back so far. You got to keep your name out there. You got to keep your name hot and you got to, you know, in skateboarding, you got to sell products, you got to sell boards, you got to sell shoes or whatever it is you're doing. You know, we have to sell views, you know, you have to get people to want to watch you fight. So it's, you gotta, you gotta really build your brand and kind of keep working. So, yeah. And there's definitely no security in it at all. <laughs> yeah, because it it's like um I imagine if you don't keep winning there's dead ends there, you know, like people just aren't invested, yeah. you know. And I imagine each fight is a fucking battle. I imagine. <laughs> it's a lot, you know. It's uh definitely you think about this one day, normally for about like 2 months or so, and uh you know, you're fighting another human being in a ridiculous <laughs> environment like you know, I I had my I had a big fight in Brazil. And, uh, I, you know, I fought this guy who's in his hometown. I walk out, you know, it's uh, an arena, a soccer stadium with, like, 10,000 people in it. And it's just like, damn, dude, this is the craziest thing. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? <laughs> and this guy wants to kill me, you know? Like, he wants to really hurt me. And, man, it all depends on if I show up and perform that night, you know, how much money I make, like, you know, the next fight, like, everything like that. Like, you really got to – I don't know, it's – Every fight is the biggest fight of your life, so it's, like, pretty intense, man. Yeah, yeah. It's probably like trying to film bangers, you know? Like, you just can't sleep, and you sit around, you're like, I'm going to go do yeah. this thing that's scary. <laughs> I mean, it's all you think about, yeah. You know, and that's exactly how I felt with skateboarding. Like, I want to think about every trick I want to do. Like, yeah, it's, uh, damn, man, it's intense. You know, I don't sleep. You, you get all crazy and emotional and... You know, you still got to get up and do it the next day, which is like the crazy thing. I think we'll, okay, so we'll pick back up there afterwards. Let's start in the beginning. Like, how'd you get into skateboarding? Where are you from, too, originally? Uh, I'm from Stoke, Massachusetts. Um, and skateboarding, man, I just like saw it one day. And I was like, dude, that is the craziest, like sickest thing ever. Um, I think it was the Tony Hawk for Skater game, nice. maybe. Um and that's actually how I got into fighting, too. Like, I just saw it and was like, dude, this is the dopest shit ever. I want to do it. Um, so, yeah, I just, like, saw Tony Hawk's first skateboarder, like, saved up enough money to buy a complete. And, like, that's just all I did every day for, you know, maybe 10, 11 years. It's just, like, I just would find more video parts, come across more things, and just get more and more into it. And uh, I don't know. It's one of those things where you just, like, fall in love. And, you know, it's all I thought about. Even just going out and skating in a parking lot every day for hours was like, you know, complete joy to me. Yeah, yeah, I know. I love, I loved skating with you. It's been a while. It was very fun. How Actually, I wanted to ask you how you met my brother too. Uh, just there's actually, we had a mutual friend. This kid Dan Murphy. Nice. And um, Dan was like such a big fan of Sam, and uh, 
he, we went to Lakeville or something to go skate in a parking lot with him. <laughs> and he's like, you gotta, you gotta meet Sam, dude, he's sick. And like, so we just, you know, we drove down to Lakeville, we skated with him, and we've just been friends ever since. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of how skateboarding is, you know, it's like, you meet all these people that motivate you and inspire you in different ways. And uh, like I said, it's the same thing as fighting, man. Like, it's really like a, such a big, I draw so many parallels to it. it it's like trips me out sometimes. Yeah, I think it's because we put our all into it, you know, and it helps create who we are too. it builds identity. So it's like you're putting everything, your time, everything you pay attention, you watch everybody else do it. And it's like submersive almost, you know, and, and I yeah. with fighting, it's got to be so similar because you got to be so sharp or you'll get hurt just like in skating, you know? Yeah, for sure. And yeah. if you don't take it serious, you're going to, you know, get hurt. Um and, and, and it's like everything, you know, you see what someone else is doing, you're like, damn, that's dope, I want to do it like that, like, you know, because everyone has such a different style, different way to do things, different tricks that they like to do, like, you know what I mean, and you meet so many people throughout the years that just, like, inspire you to, you know, just push harder, or like, you know, like, you meet, uh, like, a new filmer or something like that, that's like, hey, man, like, let's film it this way, let's do it this way, and you're just like, oh, shit, like, I didn't even think of that, you know what I mean? <laughs> And that just happens so many times throughout your your career and what you're doing. So it's like uh, I think that's the most inspiring part, you know, because I met so many people that push me to get better, and and uh, you kind of feed off that energy and stuff like that. Yeah, for those listening, you were in the the original All I Need video too, man. <laughs> you and John Lavoy, dude, solid parts. Yeah, man. That was before we were even a brand. It was just uh, just had footage, and everyone came together for like a good idea, you know. Yeah. That was sick. You skated a lot in Fall River, and one of my favorite lines was the Nolly heel flip where you just push through, like, the cobblestone in Providence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was, like, my favorite thing in the whole video. I was like... <laughs> and that Wally at the end, too, is fucking gnarly. And Fall River off yeah. the Jersey Barrier. <laughs> yeah, I think you were there that day, too. Yeah, I was, dude. I remember. I think it was half... I was, I was terrified, man. Like, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> and, uh... It was just like, and then I think the, someone was like called the cops, so it was like, dude, you gotta do it right now. Like, and I, yeah, I just pulled it out, which was like kind of crazy. Yeah. But that was just because of pure hype, you know what I mean? And yeah. that's what I'm talking about, like having the right people around you to kind of, because it's so easy to just be like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna bitch out, man, I'm not gonna do this. Like, but if you got the right, the right set of homies around you, it's like you can do anything, you know? Yeah, they'll get you juice for sure, and everyone will kind of like feed off each other and hyper focus. Like, I, it's the best thing about filming a trick, and someone's trying to like really get something done. You just, everyone's kind of involved, even if they're on the sidelines, their energy or all that stuff. Yeah, that, that's like what I miss about skating the most is like going on big sessions where, you know, even if got like there's six people and five of them are sitting down, and you're the only person trying to trick. And, like, everyone's hyped, you know what I mean? Yeah. When's the last time you were able to skate, like, get a good session in? Um, I actually skate a lot, like, just for fun. I do a bunch of flat ground and, like, you know, I'll go cruise around. But I just worry so much about getting hurt that I don't push it too hard. Like, I'll just skate, like, a box or something. I probably skated with Barty, like, maybe a couple months ago, man. Nice. Chase, Chase, Chase is the man, dude. He shreds. Yeah. I haven't yeah, seen Chase, him in a while fucking changed my life man he's a good dude <laughs> solid filmer and shredder yeah so how so we're skating how'd you do in school in school yeah uh i mean i, I didn't do well i had a lot of stuff going on at home yeah and like sk skateboarding was kind of like my skate you know like i just couldn't wait to get home and then skateboard all night so i didn't have to be home yeah uh and i ended up dropping out of school at like 15 16 something like that could you do the work was it hard no, the, the school was super easy for me. Like, I, I learned really fast, and I, you know, I had great, good grades. It was just, like, I ended up running away from home, so it was, like, I had a, I just left, you know? Like, I didn't have a choice, really. Yeah. Um, and that's how I ended up in Providence. I just ended up fucking taking off, and uh, I just didn't care about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I finished high school. But, <laughs> Barely. <laughs> I had to go yeah. back and take a summer class just because, like, I was absent, absent a bunch, too. Yeah. But yeah, it's, I feel like it's tough, man. Like, like, I ran away from home and, like, kept going to school and then got arrested. Really? Like, yeah. <laughs> What'd you get arrested so, for? For running away from home, I guess. Like. Oh, they bust your ass, bro. Yeah. So, we were living in Fall River. Or, no, we were living in Brockton. And uh, they moved to Fall River and... 
like the day before we moved, I ran away from home because they had to leave without me. You know, like they had no choice. Yeah. And then you know, I just like hung out in my friends' houses for a little while, and then like I eventually kept going back to school, and they were like, you know, they the, my parents had called the police, so then they realized that I was like showing up to school every day. <laughs> he still <laughs> got a like, schedule. Got a couple of yeah. <laughs> and they were like, "That's the weirdest thing ever. We've never had somebody run away from like you know what I mean, run away from home." And go to school. <laughs> they were like, "Did you did you think we weren't gonna catch you?" And I was like, "I don't know, man. I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I just was fucking doing what I normally do." Why'd you have to, Why'd you have to get away from home though? Uh, you know, my parents were just like they were. I had a stepdad who was just like a bad dude. He just did a lot of drugs and was very like abusive. Yeah, and he would just be crazy, you know. Like some days he would be tweaking out over nothing, and then he'd be fine. And, it's kind of just like, uh, I just didn't want to be there, you know? Yeah, yeah, I can relate to that, dude. I, I hate when, like, your home is unstable. That's the worst thing. Your home is supposed to be where you can sit and chill and, like, not have to worry about uh, arguments or violence for the most part, you know? Yeah, for sure. It should be a safe haven, but, like, definitely been in those situations where you can't live in those situations at all. It's not good for you. Yeah, and yeah. They, exactly what you said. Like, it's just unstable. From day to day, it's completely different. You know, he could be the nicest person, and then, like, within, like, a couple hours could want to kill you, you know, and you're just like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, my mom had a little bit of that in her, so it was just like, you never knew what was going on. The bottom falls out, and you're like, oh my god, this is bullshit, like, you're just, yeah. tr- you're just trying to get through your day at school or whatever, you know, your normal fucking teenager bullshit, and then that shit happens, the adults are acting stupid. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was a weird time, man. I used to be so terrified to walk in the door because, like, they, the living room was like right by the front door, and my room was in the back. So it's like, no matter what, I'd have to like come in through the front door and kind of pass them. You know what I mean? So, and they would always my stepdad would work and then come home and sit on the couch all night and drink beer and like watch movies and shit. So yeah, you just never knew like which person you were gonna get when you opened the door. Like I'd skid all night and then just be like, "Fuck, all right, I gotta go home." Like. I just dread it. I would literally sit on my front stoop just being like, fuck, like, do I go in? Do I just not? Like, Yeah. <laughs> nah. Yeah, it was, nah. <laughs> it was rough, man. It was yeah. definitely an interesting time for sure. Well, good thing, for, it, good thing for the homies, too. You end up going to Providence, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, I definitely am where I am because of, like, people that I met through skateboarding. Uh, you know, crashing on couches and then getting jobs, you know, and stuff like that, being able to, because everyone, they, they understand, you know, they care about each other. Yeah. But like skateboard, skateboarding is a very unique group of people. I think they're self-aware, at least, at the least, most of them are self-aware because they are constantly out, like, pushing their limits on a skateboard, so they have to be very aware of what they're doing and on their board. I mean, and, and you're doing it for, for nothing, you know, for <laughs> yeah. nothing other than love, hoping to maybe get paid one day, but. You know, it's fucking hard. It's rare, like. Yeah. But you're out there doing it every single day. You know, spending your money, putting your body through hell, like. You know, for what? You know. Yeah, yeah. It's taxing. It can be. You know. Yeah, I mean, but that breeds, and that takes a special kind of person to, because like, think about how many people quit. They're like, "Fuck this!" Like, it's not going anywhere. You know, like, I'm not getting paid. I'm not getting sponsored. I'm not getting hooked up. Yeah. It's frustrating. Yeah, for me, I was just like, uh, well, I'm 35. How old are you, Spicy? 31, man. Nice. All right. So I got you by four years. I'm 35. So like, but my knees are kind of jacked. I can still skate, but like, depends on the day, you know, and the weather. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, but I've just had to like, since I can't, some days I just can't be pro, you know, like I'm just not that good that day. So I'm like, yeah, amateur at best. <laughs> I'll just film or like I do other shit now basically that still involves skateboarding and it feels like yeah. just as rewarding you know like I film a lot more and I uh but, but like think about when you were like 20 something you know and you were like in the middle of uh like you know what the height of your career or something yeah like did you ever feel like fuck man I can't be pro today like you were like dude I even though I'm hurting I'm fucking tired I have to be pro yeah yeah a lot of pressure like, and, yeah, that's exhausting, you know, and fighting is the same way, like, when I go to a new gym, like, it's just like, uh, like, you go skate with a bunch of, like, kids, you know, they want to show off in front of you, they want to fucking beat you and skate, they want to, you know what I mean, this guy's a pro skateboarder, like, I need to prove to him that I'm good, too, so I, yeah, it's, it's like, when you go into a new gym, like, people are trying to kill you because 
they're you're at where they want to be at you know yeah and it's tough to be like man i'm not feeling fucking pro right now like i'm tired of hurting <laughs> yeah. it's, an even, it's an even more ego driven thing like fighting is a very you know yeah it's literally winning and losing it's it's uh it's fucking interesting, man. Yeah, it's competitive. It's like a definitely win and loss. But that's good for your character. You learn to lose, you know, and hopefully you get your wins too. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of yeah, for that's sure, man. that's like with battle and tricks, you know. You get so many, you film these video parts, and then it's just like, you know, hopefully you age gracefully and you have to let go of it, you know. But it's still like yeah. you had wins and losses, and you enjoyed it more wins than losses. Yeah. For what? Sure, man. So what got you? So you're, what got you sparked on fighting? Because this is where our stories kind of take a separate path to. Because you're skating, all I need video, and then all of a sudden you're in the UFC. <laughs> <laughs> Which is crazy, but I didn't even for once even question it. I was like, yeah, Spicely could do that. Like you were big, you looked athletic, you could charge on a skateboard. You could clearly take a beating. I watched you take a few. So, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, didn't even question it. Made sense to me. I don't know, man. Like I... I love skateboarding and uh, that's all I wanted to do, you know, like I wanted to fucking be a pro skateboarder um, and be fucking admired and, you know, all that shit that comes with fucking being a pro skateboarder. Not even like the money, but just like people being like, dude, you're sick. Like, I fucking love your, your parts or, you know, because that's what means the most to me. And, yeah. Uh, and just like skateboarding, man, I saw it on TV one day. It was the first um, free show they did on Spike TV because it had always been on pay per view before that. And I saw it on Spike TV and I was like, dude, this is the craziest shit <laughs> ever. And uh, right away I went on to, like LimeWire and started downloading a bunch of fights. Like, and just like, I just submerged myself into it. Like, I didn't know what I was doing and like, I didn't uh, know anything about anything. Like, but I just wanted to learn as much as I possibly could and, and see as much as I could and like, yeah, I just got so hyped after that, man. And then, just like skateboarding, I, like, found a place to train, you know, met the right people. Like, luckily for me, I, I met the right people at an early part of my career. Whereas, like, half of fighting, like, you're, you're bouncing around between bad gyms. You don't know what's good. You don't know what's bad. What's good training? What's bad training? And uh, luckily, I got good training right away. And just like with skateboarding, like, I learned really fast because, like, skateboarding is just being in a parking lot for hours trying to make something perfect like trying to do this like okay i'm doing a 360 flip but like man i want it to be perfect like i want to do it every try perfect and like fighting all that is is like it's doing a bunch of moves and making it perfect like it's the same thing and i just transfer that over to training and, and fighting like my brain just learns that way uh so it's like, you know, I'd see a bunch of moves and I'd be able to get them right away because, like, I can just process information like that. Yeah. Um, and I don't get discouraged. Like, you know, skateboarding, to get one trick, 10 seconds of footage is hours of jumping downstairs and fucking slamming and <laughs> getting, you know, bombed and fucking hurt. And, and like, you know, so many people quit MMA or jiu-jitsu because it's tough. It's hard. Like, you can't do it all the time, or you're fucking, you know, it's like a lot, lot, long time of just, like, failing. Yeah. And uh, skateboarding is, like, that was the biggest lesson that it taught me was that, because that feeling of landing that trick, man, is way better than the feelings of losing and fucking fucking up every day. Like, I'm sure you've tried a trick for months or something, you know? <laughs> for sure. I've and gone that, back so many times for certain tricks and just, like, stuck with it. There's tricks that I'm still fucking trying and can't get. It's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, and that feeling of landing that trick perfect and rolling away bolts is like, there's nothing like it, you know? Yeah, it's like aligning up the stars. That's what it feels like because you're, like, doing all the mathematics and you're trying to figure it out and you're trying to keep your nerves in the pressure and, like, you're trying to picture it. Like, a lot of times when someone's struggling with a trick and they're almost landing it, I'm always, like, I just say, like, yo, picture the landing. Like, picture, like, literally close your eyes right now and just picture you riding away because, like, half of it is nerves, you know, and, like, yeah. yeah, in that feeling, for sure, it must be like winning a fight, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, it's the same thing. It's the, when I do something perfect, like in training, like I feel like, fuck, man, that was the best day, you know? And there's a lot of days where you're like, man, that sucks, I had a bit shitty day, or, you know, I got beat up. But it's like the feeling, and then winning a fight is like, the it's like, you know, putting out a fucking banger part and it being the best thing ever, you know? Yeah, like you're going viral. You're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like winning a fight is just like, it's almost, it's relieving, you know? Like, it's not even, 
happiness or like jocking yourself like it's just like fuck man i put in all this work and it fucking worked out great yeah yeah and and, uh and then you you know you rest for a little bit and then it's right back to it like you put out a video part it's hype for like a month or two or whatever a year but you got to get working on the next project you know what i mean you just got to keep it going and you just want to get better and better and better yeah and it's long term if you're gonna play something play it long term for sure so you can get better and uh yeah, with fighting, it's probably moder- It's probably hard to manage that. It's, I guess that's in your training, huh? Like people, te- people kind of. Do you have like coaches and stuff like that? I have talked to you, talked to you all about that. Yeah, I have a whole team. You know, like people that I rely on that are my coaches, my friends, like training partners. Um, you really got to surround yourself with the best people and and what works for you. You know, and it's tough, man. Like I, I have friends that will win a fight and they'll be so hyped and they're like. I don't know, man, like, uh, having a fight is, like, it's 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 so much pressure, it's so much anxiety, and then you have the media that's involved, like, so you're getting all this attention, you know, all this shit, it's all about this one day, and then it's over. <laughs> like, it, and, and they move on to the next fight, because there's another card a week later, you know what I mean, like, and then your purpose is kind of lost, like, you're like, fuck, I don't have to diet, I don't have to train every day, like, what do I do? Like, you don't know how to be a normal person again, because, like, you just spent every day thinking about this one moment and and putting all of your efforts into this one night and you know hopefully it turns out perfect and you win but even like winning and losing like i still almost feel the same like it's this kind of depression like it's it's weird man because there's like nothing like you know and you don't get a fight right away like once i fight you probably have like a few months off six months off or something and it's probably not it's not guaranteed that you'll get a fight is it or is it like you know one's coming no, it's like they'll call you, you know, like yeah. a matchmaker would be like, hey, we have this fight for you. Like, you know, I fought in December last. I probably won't fight till May. You know what I mean? That's a long time to, to not have a fight. Yeah, but that's a long time to like have to stay sharp because you probably have to stay in condition, huh? You have to, man. Cause yeah. It's like it's more work for yourself later on, you know, like it's just like skateboarding. Like if you take a bunch of time off, like it's going to be hard to get back on your board and start to kill it right away. Like. You're going to have to get back into shape. You're going to have to, like, get your timing back, your feeling back. Like, everything is, I don't know, like, uh, so for me, like, I just train all the time because this is what I love to do. And I don't really know what else to do. Like, just like skateboarding, like, this is all I want to be good at. I want to fucking put my all into it because, you know, it's going to work out if you do that. Well, I'm glad. Uh, it might not work out. Well, I'm glad you do. I'm glad you do because. Like in fighting, that seems like you should definitely not half heart that, you know. <laughs> Dude, a, you'd be surprised, man. There's a lot of people that half heart it, and and the thing with same thing with skateboarding, dude. Like, True. there's guys that <laughs> fucking party, that fucking do, you know, don't skate that much, and they can just put out fucking good shit. <laughs> and you're like, you're like, what the fuck, man? That dude was wasted all night, barely slept, and then got up and like crushed this hammer, you know, like somehow, yeah. But if you had to get in and fight someone who's been killing it all day, if it was about fighting, yep. <laughs> but dude, some some people can do that, man. They can not train, they can fucking wow. slack off, and, and it can still work out, man. Fighting is like the, it's literally the craziest thing I've ever been involved with in my life. I wonder if there's, like, a Kenny Powers out there. He's just fucking riding jet skis, getting fucked up, but kicking ass, you know? <laughs> dude, there is. This, check out this, dude, check out this guy, Cowboy Cerrone, man. Oh, I've heard him on uh, on other podcasts before. He sounds like a wild yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> He's a wild man. Dude. Like, he goes bull riding. He goes jet skiing. Like, he, you know, he trains. He trains hard. He fucking drinks Budweiser all the time. Like... <laughs> But he's just one of those guys that can show up and fight, man. And it doesn't matter if you're fucking, like, trained every day as hard as you fucking could. Or if you, like, some guys are just naturals, you know? Yeah, yeah. Some guys have to fucking work at it and and uh, put in a lot of work and, and time and all that shit, man. It's, like I said, there's no right way to do anything. Like, there's, uh, it's like, it's it's crazy. It's a mind fuck. Yeah, you got to kind of just know what's right. You got to focus on yourself, really, and just kind of, like, see what's good for you so you can gauge it, you know? Because other people... They're all over the place. Everyone's different, for sure, you know? We're all built different. We handle stress different. We are diets. Like, I can eat whatever, and I just move faster, so, like, but some people, some of my friends eat like shit, and they don't move at all, you know? Yeah. It affects everyone. And, I, and, you know, what'd you say? Everyone's affected differently, you know? Like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's no one-size-fits-all, for sure, man. If yeah. you, you dwell on that, you'll be, 
you'll be behind the whole time. Like, yeah. Or if you even dwell on what other people are doing. Like, I used to be like, fuck, man, I'm working so hard, and this guy who's not working as hard is getting more opportunities and shit. And yeah. It's not about that, you know. It's like you just got to fucking keep putting your head down and your time will come, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's That's what gives me, would drive me crazy if I had five months or if I didn't have something to work on. I'd have to work on something. I guess you, you're, 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 in, you're in the gym, though. That's what I mean. Like, uh, I have to be in the gym all the time because it's like I have to be working on something because it's just like skateboarding. Like, I would just skateboard every day no matter what, you know, whether we were filming a part or not. Yeah. Do you ever, uh, do you ever, do you ever film your training sessions and stuff like that? Um, I, I don't, I used to, I do like sometimes, but I don't really trip on it because I can, I can kind of feel like I, I know my body, I know my body really well from skateboarding. Nice. Like I can feel when I'm having a good day, when I'm on, when I'm off, like a lot, I know a lot of people that do film it and they like just sit there and look at the footage all the time and kind of trip out and kick at it you know what I mean but I can just tell by doing it well I I meant more like in the way like if you made like a vlog or like a some video series of like showing stuff that you do cause I'd watch the shit out of that <laughs> uh, no I, I don't know man I'm just kinda like a, I just like to put my head down and work like I don't really and which is bad like I should be building a brand and you know, like putting content out there and you got to get more fans and stuff, but that's just not who I am. And I think that's like kind of a big problem, you know? Yeah. Uh, some people are like, some of the best dudes on a skateboard are kind of like not, they don't, they don't focus on that at all. <laughs> yeah. They just fucking skate, you know? And it, it works out for those guys sometimes and, you know, sometimes it doesn't like, yeah. cause you could be the best skateboarder ever, but if no one knows who you are, then you're not fucking doing anything in, in the industry, you know? Yeah. Well, I'll say this. I'm a fan of Eric Spicely. So like, I would watch if you like went skating one week and then one week you're training and you just made it. Even if you put up one video a week, I would watch it. If it was yeah. like, uh, if, if it was something you worked on, you know, because it's kind of cool. I, mean, I, I really should do that because I do live, I live a pretty interesting life. Like I kind of go, I'm out in a lot of places. I'm doing a lot of stuff and um, it would be helpful to like what I'm trying to do, but I'm just not there yet. You know, like I just can't, it just feels too like contrived to me. Like, yeah. Here, look at what I'm doing, like, because it's the shit that I care about, you know, like, and I don't know if anyone else is going to care or vibe with it. Um, mm. And some people just do it anyway. Like, if you don't like it, don't watch or, you know, whatever. But it's just not who I am. And I think I just got to get better at, like, because, like, you know, fighting media, all that stuff, you got to you gotta talk to people. You got to be interesting. You know, you have to have personality. You can't just fucking be like, yeah, I'm here to fight and go home. Like, yeah. Well, it can't. Just, like, I it's imagine like there's a million kids that want to fucking be where you're at, you know. Yeah. And they'll 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 sign somebody else. Like, who's gonna sell boards? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I the the only thing I say is I love stories. I'm super like into stories and narrative and people's lot like stories, and that's what adds value to their them like in their skating. You know, like the more you know about someone, the more you can understand their motives. You know, so yeah. I mean, I definitely would like I fo a super hyper focus on skateboarding, but it's so cool to have like audio and video things where we can show like, because a lot of the shit you do must be it's so it's not what I do, you know. Like I would just yeah. I was already like wondering like what you do. It's funny. Did, have you ever watched uh, Nick Don Pierre's like Instagram or YouTube? You seen what he's been up to? Yeah, I saw that he's doing like uh, fitness coaching and like bodybuilding and shit. And yeah, yeah, he's he's another dude who's really good at like putting out content and like people are hyped on it man that dude's got a ton of followers and and uh it's crazy to see that nick's into that like i had no idea you know like whenever i hung out with nick it was always skating and stuff but to... yeah and he was a quiet dude like he was kind of kept to himself like, yeah yeah <laughs> and some like i said man some people are just natural at it like i'm just not i have a good friend man who is like i consider him to be literally one of the best fighters in the world yeah and he's but he's a quiet dude he plays video games he smokes weed like he Safe. keeps to himself, you know what I mean? And he's like, fuck, man, like, how do I get fans to like me? Like, uh, show what that. Do I have to do? Show that. Just show them smoking weed, playing video games. <laughs> I would. <laughs> but, like, you know, but when you, you're in your own head, you're like, dude, no one's going to fucking give a shit about this. Like, this is just the kooky shit that I'm into. <laughs> yeah. And then once you just stop giving a fuck, like, he's gotten way better at that. You know, he can, like, people are like, damn, dude, you have so much personality. Like, I didn't even know. <laughs> 
Yeah. And it's it's tough, man. It's it's a it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting game for sure. It's entertainment, you know. Skateboarding is entertainment. Yeah, it definitely can be. It can be whatever. That's the cool thing. The similarities between fighting and skating is that. You can be from any background, you can be from any class, you can be a jokester, you can be someone super serious. Everyone has access to skating or fighting. Like it's, Exactly, yeah. You know what I mean? Like So it's kind of like a ball of clay, and it's like what you decide to do with it is what becomes the creation, I guess. Yeah, and I think that's why I fell in love with it right away, because it reminded me of skateboarding. The feeling was the same feeling I got when I went out and skated every day. Like It was like, man, this is all I want to do. I want to skate all day. And night and come home and watch skate videos with my friends yeah and then like wake up and do the same thing you know and i'm content with that like nothing else matters not no job you know a girlfriend anything like that like like i just want to be doing this and like fighting is the same way man like i literally if i don't train i, I go crazy i feel you know depressed or bummed or something like and yeah it's not the same every day it's not 100 percent going hard but it's like you know you're in the gym and you're fucking doing what you love to do yeah it's nice that you know that because some people never even have like a, a passion or a drive for something they haven't found something or they didn't pick something whatever it is you know yeah and that's not, it's not that it's crazy to me but it's like fuck man if you could only feel what i feel about this one thing you know and it's like think about how many people you've met that are like dude what if you're skateboarding like how childish is that or you know <laughs> Like, why don't you fucking get a real job or something like Oh, dude, I understand the kookiness of me going, all I need is skateboarding. Like, to someone who never has, like, had their heart beaten while riding a skateboard. I know how crazy that sounds. <laughs> yeah. And, I, like, fighting, man, it's not certain. It's not secure. It's not, you know what I mean? But it's like, fuck, man, my heart just beats so hard for it. And uh, it's hard to, like, explain that to somebody who doesn't have anything like that. Like, someone that just works and, and comes home and plays with their dog or something, you know, it's like, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a different feeling, man. It's uh, it's intense for sure. Was there was there like a moment where you thought where you had a moment where you're like, I could do this like on a professional level? Did it happen quickly? Was there like a long build up? Well, that was the whole thing with me. Like when I got into fighting, I didn't want to be a fighter. Like I wasn't like, oh, this is what I want to do with my life. I want to be a champion. You know? Yeah. I want like I was like I just want to do one pro fight and like that's it. So I set, like, little goals like that. Like, I think what, like, kind of broke my heart in skateboarding is, like, since I was a kid, I was like, dude, I want to be the best. I want to be a pro skateboarder. I want to – and he, as you know, like, it's not going to work out for everybody. Not everybody's going to be a pro skateboarder. You know what I mean? Not everyone's going to sell a ton of boards and, like, put out sick video parts no matter how hard they try. Yeah. And that kind of, like, not broke my heart, but it deters you after a while. You're like, fuck, man, I've been doing this for so long, like – and I'm not where I want to be, like... Yeah. And, and it's because I had all that pressure that I put on myself. Like, instead of just being like, I just want to skate for fun and fucking, you know, get good and do a bunch of tricks and hang out with my friends, it's a different kind of mindset. Um, but with fighting, I was like, oh, I just want to fight. Like, I don't care about being famous. I don't care about being a world champion. Like, I just want to fight and, and have fun. And then, so it's like, I want to fight. I'm like, oh, that was cool, man. I'll, I'll do that again, like... I want another fight, and I want another fight, and then, like, you know, someone's like, dude, you could fucking do something with this, man, like, you're winning fights, you're not getting hurt, like, you're crushing dudes, like, why don't you do this, like, professionally, like, and I was like, oh, I never really thought, you know, I just doing it for fun, man, like, I just love to do it, like, it's not, it's not work to me, it's not taxing, it's not. You know, it's just like something I would do whether you paid me or not. Yeah, I could see and the I, I could see the pleasure in it. I bet it could be very pleasurable if because you it's almost like you're landing tricks a lot when you're making all those moves. It's a high pressure and like you're aligning the stars. I guarantee it when you're doing those yeah. grappling and rolling and like. Yeah, man, it's it's definitely like that, and <laughs> uh, and then so I was like, all right, I'll buckle down, and, and I you know I met this coach who was like, dude, you push hard for five years, like the next ten years of your life are going to be easy, like. And I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And then I just kind of put everything into it, you know, where, like, I trained super hard. And, like, and then I just kept winning. And, you know, I got to a point where, like, I was 8-0, hadn't lost, hadn't even lost a round in fighting. Wow. It was, like, crazy. Because, I, like I said, I, I'm not the most athletic dude. I'm not, like, some bodybuilder or some super strong, you know, someone who did athletics since they were a kid. Like, I just skateboarded. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't play football. I didn't wrestle. I didn't box. Like, it's pretty hard to get into fighting late in life and be 
talented at it. You know, and just like you can't just pick up a skateboard at 25 and hope you're gonna fucking have a good career. Like you gotta start when you're a kid. You gotta you know learn all that stuff, like all the body mechanics of it. And that's what comes from skateboarding as a child, you know. Yeah, that worked in your favor. Score one for Spicely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, skateboarding. Skateboarding paid like the biggest difference in in me getting good at fighting in a short amount of time. Because I already had so much body awareness. I already had so much, like, you know, like, a lot of it is just feeling. Like, yeah. fighting is all about, like, being at the right place at the right time and moving, shifting your body weight, like, doing all this stuff. And a lot of, like, a lot of people that train, like, the whole first few years is all about, like, learning how to move your body in this completely foreign way. Like, you gotta, you know, someone's throwing a punch at your face. Like, you gotta be able to, like, block it and defend it and not, do what you should, like, your body's normally, like, you're gonna run away, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just like in skateboarding, like, you're gonna fall. You have to learn how to fall to land a trick down a big set of stairs, or else you're just gonna be scared the whole time. Yeah, that's, like, a lot of my, I do skateboard lessons nowadays, and that's, I get little kids that are, like, I have a couple little girls and, like, a bunch of little boys, and they're all from, like, 10 to 15, and a lot of it is just learning how to balance and find our center of balance and push and start getting in motion, and then the rest is, like, learning how to fall safely from the bottom up, from the, start at the bottom and work our way up the ramps, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, you know, your body naturally is designed to not fall, to not get hit, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So you have to unlearn all that stuff, you know? Like, you just gotta unlearn it, and that takes so much time. But if, like, you know, I came into training and fighting, like, already being like, dude, I can take punishment, like, I've would fall downstairs all the time like i don't know like i i i could, didn't have to go through that like l- grace period of learning like i already kind of was there yeah um, that's it I, had, I ended up like picking it up really fast man like i got my jiu-jitsu black belt in five and a half years which is half the time most people take to get their black belts wow that's crazy it's crazy to think that you have a black belt that's sick too <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's pretty nuts man but it's like it's all about feeling your body and being able to use it and uh being sharp you know what i mean like skateboarding is all about being sharp like you gotta think about so much stuff and look and pay attention and you gotta watch for rocks cracks you gotta like have your feet in the right place at the right time like you have to have your weight centered perfectly like to land something to do something yeah definitely and and i just translated that to, to training and it was like it was you know they say that skateboarders and surfers are the best people to do jujitsu really that's it yeah what? That's like a big thing. Like all the dudes that like in Brazil and all these other places, like all they do is surf and do jujitsu. And you can do like um you can practice like jujitsu without having to fight someone, right? It's you can, Yeah, yeah, for sure. You just roll and, and practice uh positions and stuff, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I always worry because my knee. My knee's like jacked to the point where like it would hurt to bend a certain way, you know? And that's what yeah. would worry me about trying it. But it looks amazing and super fun and addictive. Like, you too, yeah. you could get really stuck in a rabbit hole trying to learn shit. Dude, you know what's crazy, man? Is there's so many pro skateboarders that are super into jiu-jitsu and MMA. Like, dudes hit me up all the time. Like, legends. People that I looked at, like, dude, Brian Sumner hits me up all the time. That's <laughs> sick. He's been on the podcast. <laughs> he, he does jiu-jitsu. His son does jiu-jitsu, man. Like, Dakota, maybe? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> sick. Um, dude, Ricky Ay- Ayola hits me up all the time. Wait, he does jiu-jitsu or he wants to his kids do jiu-jitsu man. he's a super big super big fan like he watches all the ufc's like he hits me up and like fans out like you would as a kid talking to your see your favorite skateboard like, he's asking me it's just weird you know like dude i used to fucking look up to you and like you know like if i saw you i'd freak the fuck out and now you're fucking messaging me like asking me like the lamest questions, you know, like you guys are just is, you guys are just fanning out on each other. He's like fanning out on your UFC, and you're fanning out on his push. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking crazy, man. Like uh, you know, Tom Knox, the old uh, of course, Santa yeah, Cruz. dude. He fucking hits me up like, dude, trains jiu-jitsu, like super, super big into it. Like it's just crazy, man. Yeah, that's kind of sick because you were saying like that's kind of what you wanted out of skating was like kind of like just to, like, meet those dudes that kill it and be a part of it, you know? It's like, yeah. you kind of got to talk to Ricky O. <laughs> and, well, then it's like, you know, you meet these guys, and, like, you know, like, Brian Summers, like, dude, come out to Huntington Beach, come train, you know, I'll give you a place to stay. Like, Sick. it's just like skateboarding, man. You meet the right people, and, like, it opens up so many doors. You get to go travel. You get to, you have a place to stay. 
And it's like right away you're homies, you know what I mean? Even though you don't know each other, like, it's just like I met you. You're like, dude, you're, you're friends with my, my brother Sam. Like, yeah, I'll hook you up on the board. I'll help you out. Like, Similarity. It's just like, you know, if that person likes that person and that person's like that, they got similar qualities. So you kind of like, yeah. and especially if you, exactly. when you meet a skater, and I'm sure when you meet someone who's a fighter that actually does it all the time and like, you can tell the quali- some of the qualities they might have, you know? Because you know what yeah. it takes to do that shit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You, you, like, have that mutual respect for each other right yeah. away. Because it's like, dude, you know what it's like to fucking grind like this and, and work super hard at something. And, and I do, too. And, then like, right away, you just, like, you know, I have friends that, man, like, I've met through fighting that are, like, my best friends in the entire world. Yeah, that's... I mean, not, not everybody's great. Just like in skateboarding, you're going to meet assholes. You're going to meet dudes that are cocky and fucking high up themselves. Um, but for the most part, you meet some really good dudes and, and, uh, you know, that's how I ended up in Vegas. That's how I ended up in Montreal. Like someone's like, dude, come out and train. And you're like, fuck man. Like now I'm at the best gym in the, like one of the best gyms in the world. (laughs) And it's like all because like I met this dude, you know, and and we both share the same fucking love or something. Yeah. It's hard to say no to that. You're like, yep, I'm in, I'm fucking in. (laughs) What else are we going to do? Why why not? (laughs) It's just, I'm sure you've met dudes that are like, dude, come out to California and sleep on my couch and like come skate you know what i mean and it's like all right yeah some of the best decisions <laughs> exactly yeah. um exactly i, I kind of wanted to ask you like have you ever fought someone where there was like real animosity like you guys really didn't like each other no that's never happened to me man and that's just not the person i am like i know a lot of guys that have to be mad and hate the person like yeah to fight them you know and i just i feel like that's why I've been able to be so successful because I'm just calm. Like I don't get stressed out. I don't get mad. I'm nervous, but I'm not like, I got to kill this motherfucker. Like, you know, cause when you're like that, you're not going to perform properly. Like your brain is clouded, you know? Yeah. Um, and everybody I've ever fought has always been cool to me and cool afterwards. And you know, there's been like people that have like talked shit to me to get me into like fighting them. Yeah. But it's, it's like, I don't know, man, it's all a joke. It's like, it's fighting. Like we're here to do a job. You're not going to kill me. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you train, I train, like, we'll fight. Like, why do you have to say all this other shit? You know, if the people want to be entertaining or they see other people doing it, like Conor McGregor, and yeah. they want to get to that level, you know, like, they're, they're like, okay, well, I have to be like this to to be successful or something, you know? Yeah, I, it's and, strange. They do that in skating, too, like some people. Of course. Yeah, you see it. You're like, what the fuck? Somebody, somebody wears a certain type of clothes or something like that, and then people are like, dude, I got to dress like that now to... Yeah. To get to get picked up or something, you know, and it's like people see through that, you know what I mean? Like Yeah. If you're not yourself, it'll it'll come out. Like it'll it'll just always come out in the wash, you know. Yeah, that's why I always give people like yourself and even Westgate cuz he's like my homie and and he uh he's kind of a quiet dude and he doesn't really like promote his stuff too much and I'm always like wishing that he, that he would because I'm like, dude, you're one of the raddest dudes. Like he works hard, he has like Yeah. And I'm like, you would be the great role model. You should like, you would be a great role model. You should show what you do because that's like who I, who people should aspire to be pro, you know? And it's like, I'm always like, you have this huge following in your pocket. (laughs) And I'm like, otherwise those kids are going to have to go watch some fucking, there's like a lot of garbage out there, you know, of dudes that are over promoting and trying to market and sell you shit all the time. And you're like, that ruins it, you know? It's got to be like a counterbalance somehow. I mean, I I just like guys that have always stayed true to themselves and kind of, you know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like you've always been someone who's like, all right, like, you know, everyone's wearing fucking earth tones and like, and whatever and you know tight clothes and all this shit and you're like dude i'm the same fucking dude like i'm gonna be bumping too hot <laughs> wearing the same gear and doing the tricks that i like to do and if you don't like it like too bad you know yeah yeah that's sick that's but, that's that's how it, um it's probably why we're friends you're similar <laughs> yeah yeah and because you see the guy that changes his style you know three times in the last like few years that was like super into hip hop and, and baggy clothes. And now he's wearing tight black jeans and like, you know, grew his hair out and, and all. The, and you're like, dude, you're just switching up, man. Because that's like the current style in skateboarding right now. Yeah, dude, I see it all the time. There's like kids that pop out. They look like they came straight from the meme factory where they saw some video that went viral and they're dressing exactly like whoever doing the same exact trick that they saw. Uh, yeah. It's like insane. There's like armies of like drones. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's like, dude, they, we already have a, I mean, it's like when PJ Ladd came out, like, everyone wanted to be like PJ, like, everyone bought all his boards, like, bought ES, you know, uh, Excels, and, like, that's all good. 
<laughs> try to be exactly like him. And it's like, we already have a PJ, you know, it's like, you got to be yourself, man. And that is what I feel like shines through more than, than anything else. Yeah. And that's what that exact, I agree. And that's the people I think that should put out content so I can watch like, it. Like, I, like you said, <laughs> Westgate, Westgate has been the same dude the entire time. You know what I mean? Like he's never switched up and, and he just fucking kills it. And people love him because of his work. You know what I mean? Not because like of his antics, not because he's crazy and, yeah, you know, gets all fucked up and, or whatever. Like, yeah. And he just goes home and does the shit that he loves to do. Like he, like, a, like I watched some of his like epically layers and shit. And I'm like, dude, I like Westgate is the sickest dude because he does what he loves to do and doesn't care what anyone thinks. Like he's not trying to be and sell you something. Yeah, he's definitely. Like you're, gonna, you're gonna you're gonna buy it because you're fucking you vibing with what he does. Yeah, he's definitely focused on what he does. I I agree with that. I just, we were talking about vlogs not that long ago, and people get, like, this feeling when they think of, like, a vlog, like, a video vlog, because they see, like, these dudes that do it, and they have, like, their hair all done up, and they got all this, like, they're putting on a persona, you know? So, like, they kind of scare away people, like, other pros from doing it, and I'm like, it's just a tool, like, you could just use that tool to promote your lifestyle, and, like, to me, Brandon is, like, the dude that is, like, kids should look up to you know but they don't like they just they see his skating and i'm always just like you should you should promote a little more you know but it's fine it's his stuff his life but it's just like uh it's funny because some people have to be fully submersed and focused on it and that detracts from it i guess so yeah i mean like like you said doing vlogs it's almost like you just kind of throwing shit at the wall and like hoping what sticks you know but like the best vlogs are the dudes that are just themselves like yeah they're they're hyped on what they're doing and like you know, hopefully you are too. And if you're not, you don't watch it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like Joe Rogan just like does what he wants, says what he wants, and you know what I mean? Like, people are hyped on him because they feel that. Yeah. If he was like, you know, changing his views because that's not what's popular, or you know, I don't know. Like, it, it's tough. I think it, it's hard, man. It's definitely uh, you gotta like find yourself. Um, yeah. And you gotta go through a bunch of different styles to find yourself and and uh, what feels comfortable. You know. Yeah, it's weird. Kids nowadays have to grow up with, like, social media. It's already introduced to them. They have phones at such a young age. They're like, yeah. imagine trying to find yourself and then also, like, put it out there to the world. <laughs> yeah. Like, we avoided yeah. some of that because it came afterwards. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And you only watch video parts, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> and now it's like, you can get sponsored by how many followers you have on Instagram and shit. And, uh... Fighting is the same way, man. Like, the bigger the following you have, the more money they're going to put into you, the more marketing dollars, you know what I mean? Because, like, that's what sells, you know? Yeah. Like I said, my friend my friend is one of the best fighters in the world. Like, he's a super good dude. He trains harder than anyone I've ever seen. And, like, you know, he doesn't talk shit. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't have anything crazy about him. Like, he doesn't have crazy hair or, you know what I mean? Like, dress a certain way or have crazy tattoos. Like, he's just a fucking regular dude. Yeah. And, uh... It's tough to stand out, you know, and you'll meet people that are like, dude, I fucking, I love you because your fighting style's sick, you know, I don't know, it's, those are the fans that I love to meet, like, because, I, like, I don't have a very uh, fan-friendly style, you know what I mean, like, it's very grappling heavy and, and, uh, what do they like, fan- sorry to cut you off, what do they like, like, f- fucking Van Damme style, like, come out wild, like, that's probably the most entertaining? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the most entertaining is like blood and knockouts. You know? Yeah, like it makes sense. What, because if you don't know anything about fighting, you know that like, all right, that dude got fucked up. Like that's all. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, like re- wrestling and jujitsu is very like intricate. It's very, you know, it's like tech skating. Like, <laughs> like think about like Ronson Lambert, dude, who just fucking kills it. Yeah, I but do. it's like may- maybe not the most appealing style to everyone because it's like. Oh, I can't do that. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Like, he's just doing a bunch of shit. Yeah, but, it's like, kind of like handrail dude, skating versus tech skating on, on manuals yeah, and stuff. If you're doing the big-ass handrail, the big stair sets, you're like, I can understand that. Like, that's crazy to me. <laughs> it's entertaining. <laughs> it's, it's entertaining because it's like, dude, that's that was fucking gnarly. And, yeah. like, the demographic for fighting is, like, 18 to 30-year-old, like, males. And they, most people that watch fighting don't train. They don't understand what's going on. Yeah. They just know that two guys are in there trying to kill each other. And, you know, if you're, if you're not like a guy that knocks people out, it's kind of hard to get ahead, you know? Yeah. You don't have to. You don't have, you, you don't have a gimmick. You, you know, your, your style is not very fan friendly. Like, you got to work way harder than the person who's like knocking dudes out, but maybe kind of sucks at fighting, you know? Yeah. 
Well, that's why I, that's why I suggest the like a vlog or like um some sort of show where it's like you're the you're the host of the show, but you're just showing them the cool shit you do. Cause then yeah. you could kind of cause the cool thing that I learned like when I was riding for all those companies like I skate for Birdhouse and Z York, it was like they kind of just put me in their clothes and like they promoted me. I had no control, you know, because if we didn't have the yeah. phones and stuff, then it was just like yeah, exactly. Literally, I'd put on their clothes, they'd shoot the photos, I'd skate in the video parts, they'd edit it, put their own music to it. It was like yeah. they owned my rights, you know? And now with like yeah. the with with like social media and the capabilities to do vlogs and podcasts, we can actually like just become our own our own uh, voice, you know? Which is rad because everyone has a unique sure. voice. Everyone has a very unique voice and personality. Everyone's different. So it's just like I look at it like tools. Like, some people get a hold of fire, and they'll burn a village down. Some people get a hold of fire, they'll forge steel, they'll shape the steel and fucking build the town, you know? And it's like, yeah. the technology that we have, it's like, I don't know. That's why I'm always, like, telling dudes, I'm like, you should do, like, one video a week. It'd be sick. Even if it was just, like, coffee with Spicely, and then you talk about fighting or something, that would be see, so like, sick. Like, see, like, it's just like you said, like, I'm part of that, like, kind of old-school skating, like, generation where, like, like, I still feel weird about posting shit on Instagram, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I have friends that post three things a day, you know, that like <laughs> all, about, all about what they do. And I'm like, fuck, man, that's lame. Like, I don't can't give a shit, but that's what you have to do to get yourself out there. Like, you have to put stuff out there. But maybe like, not uh, three, not maybe three times a day. I'd say, like, if you created something once a week where people could follow it, that'd be sick. Because then they'd, like, tune in and it'd be like you'd have this platform to talk to, you know, of people that might actually, yeah. like, know you and really like you, you know? It's hard to build yeah. it up, but it's, like, one day a week would be sick, you know? It's hard, though. Yeah, man, I completely agree. But like I said, I like I feel like I'm still from that, like, older generation where, like, yeah. I don't give a shit about that because I never had to do that. Like, I never yeah. have to post things on Instagram or, or Twitter. And, uh, <laughs> Twitter's hard as yeah. hell. I don't get it. It's, it's, like a, it's, it's a joke to me, like, because I see I see the shit that people put out, and I'm like, I laugh. I'm like, dude, you're fucking so lame. Yeah. Like, but that's what fans want to see. You know, they want to <laughs> know that you're a person and like what you're doing. And uh, I just want to fucking put my head down and train. You know. Yeah. And Let the work. That's not that's not always the best thing. Yeah, I mean, definitely there's a balance in it because there's some people that work too much and they don't share at all. And then there's some people that share it all and they don't do any work on themselves. And you're like, there needs to be like a balance. That's what I'm saying. It's like there's dudes that do shit like podcasts and vlogs and they just like they doing it for weird reasons. So it's like transparent, you know, it's not like they're they're just doing it because they enjoy it. Like, you know, when people skate and they're doing it just to get notoriety or whatever, or same with fighting, I bet you can see people, they're just in it for one thing. And they're just like kind of self centered or whatever, you know, like, there's always people that do that in anything, you know, it's like, but when when you're trying to make money, you know, like, you got to do that shit. Like, the whole goal is to make as much money as possible so I don't have to get a real job. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like at some point, like a, you can see in my Instagram where it like switches. Like I don't post about – like most of my posts are about fighting. Yeah. Um, because it's like, all right, you got to kind of bite the bullet and do what you don't want to do if you want to be successful. Yeah. Because just being the best fighter it doesn't fucking pay the bills. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the dudes that are the best skateboarders but don't want to do that extra shit, guys like – Bobby Puello, uh, Puglio and like Ricky, who are the fucking, I think they're the best fucking dudes ever. They are. But they don't, they don't do all the extra shit that like other <laughs> kids are doing, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's kind of tough. You're not going to get paid, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, but it's all about what, why you're doing it. Like if you're doing it to get paid, then you got to sell out, you know what I mean? Like not sell out, but you got to play the game. Yeah. You know, fucking. And that's, you gotta play the game a little bit. And that's fine. That's true. Because, like, it, you know, if you... it's it, the hard, What we're talking about is trying to find a way to monetize your art, whatever that is, whether it's skateboarding, yeah. pole dancing, fighting, whatever. And everybody would love to live their dream, right, if they could earn it. And, and like, that's what I think about America. I'm like, you should be able to, like, dream big and be, wanna pro, be a pro skateboarder or a fighter as long as you're willing to earn it, you know? You have to, like, yeah. r- really work for it. And that's, like, kind of where that promotion part comes in because it's weird because, like... Back in the day to get sponsored, companies, they'd promote you for you to magazines and yeah. videos. They would promote you and they'd put you out there. But now it's like democratized where like if you can promote yourself in a way that you can manage because that's a hard fucking thing to do is to promote like yeah. it, it's hard to like to say like what you mean all the time. And it's it makes you vulnerable at times talking to people and like it's a skill definitely that's hard to earn. But 
but um I don't know. It feels like that's what it's the this is what it is. We have these technologies, we have these ways to use these tools to like try to show what we're doing and why we're doing yeah. it. That way it adds value to it, you know? Cuz like to me, yeah. just having you on the podcast already makes me more of a fan of your fighting cuz now I know you're like a down like I already knew you were down to earth, but we haven't talked in so long. It's just like re-sparked why I'd want to root for you. You know what I yeah. mean? Like there's yeah. there's depths to things that hard like people like a Westgate that like keep their head down and grind. There's depths to them that I'm just like I want to see uh, it'd be sick for them to share that because that depth like yeah. would make you love that so much more you know yeah I mean like I, I feel like epically later like really like there was always be people like oh that dude's sick but like I don't know anything about him you know and then yeah. when you get to hear a story and you get to see what their life's about you're like dude I'm a fucking huge fan now like I yeah. want to see that dude do well yeah yeah like uh I, I love that shit you know what I mean and I, it's just like I just you gotta get over that hump of like you got to put yourself out there, you know what I mean? You got to just kind of do it. Yeah. And, uh, you got to set your goals. Like, you know, my friend, like I said, doesn't care about being famous. He just wants to work hard and, and fight. And you got to kind of have to be like, okay, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to be successful, which is earning the most money possible so you don't have to get a job again? Then you got to fucking do the interviews. You got to do the, you know, I used to be like, I don't want to do interviews. I think it's corny. I don't want to do this. It's corny. Like, but then I'm like, okay, well, do I want to, like, there's, in the UFC, there's only 500 people under contract at one time. That's amazing. So people, that's amazing. Hold on, that's amazing that you're 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 involved in that. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very surreal. Yeah. You know? So you can get to that spot, but you got to keep it. You got to add value to your name. You know what I mean? Because there's like a million other people that want to be where you're at. So the second you have no like, if you notice, there's guys that will lose but they'll still keep them around because they have value to their name you know yeah yeah just yeah. like there's skateboarders that like maybe aren't putting out the best shit but there's value to their name because they've created a brand for themselves yeah so you'll you'll get beyond longer versus like you know just some guy that doesn't talk to anybody and doesn't have any following but is rad you know what i mean like you'll get cut like so it's it's interesting man it's it's a I, i've definitely learned to adapt to that yeah. Because it's like, all right, it's not just about winning fights, man. You gotta talk to fans. You gotta talk to media. You gotta interact on social media. You gotta do interviews. You gotta, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta be yourself. Like, I, it's like finding this fine balance of like playing the game and still being true to yourself. You know? Yeah, that's a beautiful. Like, I've always, I always felt like you were a dude that never wanted to sell out. You know? <laughs> Definitely. You always want, you always wanted to be yourself because like. That's what's important to you is looking at yourself in the mirror at the end of the day being like, all right, man, I'm not this fake, you know, because it's tough. It's it's really hard to hold that up. Yeah. And it's hard. It's hard, too, because, like, you know, it's just hard to be alive. So it's like <laughs> it <fucking> is, man. <laughs> it's hard to be consistent with things because, like, we have to as we get older, we have to balance out our, our emotions and figure out who who we truly are and like what we truly believe. And that takes time. And like. It's hard to do that and share that at the same time, you know, like, yeah. but it's so important because I believe that like 25 turns to 35, you know, and that's 10 years and you could do a lot with 10 years, you know, like yeah. you, you could be a leader or a role model or you could like maybe help and do inspire or whatever, you yeah. know, like, and it's crazy that we have these phones in our pocket and these like, they're all like, we have these things that we could build value with, you know, but we got to like build it into our lives but it's like people have to learn how to do this because like i was to go back to what we were talking about before i don't think there's that many people like getting sponsored i think nowadays if you want to be a pro like you have to build up your own platforms and your own yeah. following and like you could be a pro like you could turn enough people on to skating and support skateboarding enough that people think you deserve a, a your name on a board i imagine that's just like fighting like if you just yeah so, like yeah. I said, there's 500 people that are under contract. There's Amazing. thousands of people who fight. Easily. Thousands. Like, I have a friend who's 11 and 1. He's lost one fight. He's won 11 fights and finished them all and cannot get a call to save his life. Holy you know I mean? like, shit. I'd be so pissed. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And it's, t you know, it's fucking tough, man. Like, so, you know, you got to adapt to that. And, like, it, it's just like, like you said, falling. You have to unlearn how to do things. Like, I'm not a big talker. I'm not a big social media guy. I'm not a big outgrown personality. You know what I mean? But like my friends, you know, think you're cool or think you're awesome because those people like know you the best. So you have to unlearn to like, to be able to share, to be able to talk. Like, yeah. I remember the first time I did an interview, dude, I was like fucking freaking out. Like, <laughs> oh, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to fucking do. 
and then it gets easier, you know, because you learn how to just like have fun. And now it's like I have interviews and I feel great and I'm just fucking having fun, talking shit and, and uh, being myself. But it's like at first you're like, well, I don't know like how I should act or how I should say things. Should I joke around? Should I be serious? Like, I don't know. It takes time to learn that and it's, it's hard to kind of let go. Yeah. And, and there's people that like become so successful. Like, you know, Brennan Schaub. You texted me about Brennan Schaub talking about me on his podcast. Yeah, yeah. That was crazy. I was like, what the and fuck? It, and it's, it's nuts that you even know who Brennan Schaub is he has nothing to do with anything other than fighting but he's turned himself like he wasn't a great fighter he wasn't successful he got knocked out a bunch and ended up losing and got you know cut but he became such a personality you know because he became friends with joe rogan and like joe rogan kind of put him on and got his podcast out there and now he's doing like he's like dude i make more money doing podcasts than i fucking ever did fighting and i don't have to get hit in the face you know like yeah he works for showtime he fucking does stand-up comedy like he's doing all this shit and it's like fucking crazy you know yeah. yeah he has a gift he's very outgoing and he's very like he he's not scared to like make an ass out, out of himself you know that's why comedy fits him <laughs> but like with fighting man like he was like kind of caught up he was like i felt like he was someone he wasn't because you feel like that's what you have to be and fighting dude you could try and do everything right and you just still lose so you know it's so sick to see somebody like turn what they had like the platform they had and put it into another thing you know yeah and be, and be successful at it. Like, that doesn't, like, most guys fight, and when it's over, they fucking don't have anything. You know, like, most pro skateboarders, if they didn't save their money, or if they didn't, you know, do this shit right, or set things up for later on, have a brand, have a, a board company, or uh, something, you know, they're, you're left with nothing because you put everything into this. Yeah, I had that moment where it was like, okay, the recession hit, lost the sponsors, and I just had savings, and I was like, either I can just get a job and take the savings and start the skateboard brand or just live off that money and try to figure something out, you know? And I was just like, I'm getting a job yeah, and... It's fucking scary. <laughs> you know, it's it's going to end one day, you know? And you really have to set yourself up for later on. And like, But it's like nobody teaches you that stuff. Like, you're just a fucking kid, man, who fucking learned how to skateboard from a troubled fucking home. Like, you know, when I first started fighting, like, I didn't fuck man i want a big fight and like i had to do taxes for the first time like a, you know what i mean i have to save money now i like don't know what to do and you, you gotta learn that shit like nobody teaches you how to fucking like how many pro skippers you know that were making good money that like didn't save it at all and fucking were buying dumb shit and it's always the you know? opposite because like when you when pe someone thinks you have a free ride and it's like never gonna end and there's people that want to leech off you and like or people that lead you the wrong way or like they don't realize it's like the dudes that are always looking at you going, okay, yeah, the ride's awesome now, but it could end soon or you got to prepare for the next phase. Like it ends, but it could keep going. Like for me, when, when my pro career ended or whatever, I still have a pro board, but like when I like stopped getting paid by sponsors, I just, yeah. it ended, but it ended for a better thing. Cause now it's like, okay, I'm independent. Now I just put the money in and now I sponsor people, you know, and help them. Yeah. So it's like, it's it ended but it's still going that's why i do skateboard yeah. that's why i do the podcast and i do skateboard lessons too is because like i still feel like i can help skateboarding in some way like yeah i, I feel like just us talking is cool because you're, you're like a fighter and a skateboarder and i know there's other kids out there that skater that are into fighting too do you know uh kevin phelps as well yeah yeah deer so puncher I knew him through skateboarding for a long time but then like he started following me on instagram and like and then I was like, oh, shit, this dude trains and, like, you know, is hype. There's a lot of dudes that skate that, like, like fighting, which is crazy. Yeah, it's sick. It's so crazy. But that's the whole thing. Like, I remember I used to never talk about skateboarding. I used to never put that shit out there. And then when I did, like, all these people hit me up and they were like, oh, I didn't know that you skated. Like, I skate too. And I like fighting. Like, you're my favorite fighter now. Like, I want to watch you fight. And it's just like you said, you got to kind of put that shit out there and not really care and You'll, you'll reach a whole different audience if you're just yourself, you know? But there's nothing wrong with, like, saying it, that it's, like, awkward and, like, it's not natural to, like, try to share yourself, like, in front of a camera. Like, whatever we're going through as a population or whatever, like, people are, it, it's just different now, you know? Like, it's not normal. Yeah. It's hard for people to just go, what I try to do is I just go, all right, I'm just really lucky to be here and I'm very lucky for everything I have in my life. So I just like try to show stuff I care about, you know, sometimes yeah. people, it's a lot of my dogs, you know, <laughs> but like whatever, see, like, someone like, can hate I, on I've that. I've never done like a, like a vlog where like I'm talking, like I don't do Instagram stories where like I'm talking or doing it. Like I, I post a bunch of pictures. 
Yeah. But I don't do like because that's just not who I, I feel uncomfortable about that shit, you know. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's some, I know people that fucking document every second of their life, you know, like everything they're doing, like oh sparring day, this and that, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and it's like I don't know because people do vibe with it or they don't, you know. And, yeah. And, uh, you gotta like kind of learn how to fucking do that shit because it's not natural, like you said. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with it. Nah, you just, and you don't have to, like, there's a lot of horrible examples out, out there of people that are doing it, and they're, like, doing it for, like, stupid, vain reasons, but, like, definitely, that's why I'm, like, when I started thinking about it, I'm, like, how many podcasts could I handle? Maybe one a week. That means I have to meet one new person a week. Could I handle that? Yeah. I thought about that. I'm, like, I think I could handle meeting one new pe- person or, like, just talking to one of my friends and, like, fil- recording it, because it's not easy, like, to kind of go back and forth and like stumble over words and make sure we <laughs> sync up all the time and then like same with like vlogs i was like could i film my week even if i only film like 10 minutes a day or something it, after seven could i be able to have time to edit one and put it out and like figure yeah. it's like it was so much work and it was really uncomfortable it's like trial and error it's like when you're beginning skating for sure and you're yeah <laughs> i mean think about how many people quit because of that trial and error phase where it's just too hard, you know, like, yeah, you can't fucking do it, you know, and dude, I have so many ideas that I just don't put out there because I'm just like, ah, it's going to be too hard. You know, I have to fucking film it. I have to edit it. I have to do this. I have to do that. Maybe I don't feel like doing it this week, but like, yeah, you know, like even what you said kind of just like already sparked shit in my head. Like, all right, if I can commit to one a week, which is the bare minimum, yeah, then you can handle it. Then you're like, okay, well then I can do two a week, you know, like, yeah, yeah. And you can work your way up from there, like, set small goals. Yeah. Um, and that right there, like, us just talking about that, like, kind of already has the wheels turning in my head. Like, I never thought of that because the way I am, it's like, I want to go all in. Like, you know, I want to fucking do as, as much as I can. And, and I feel like, all right, if I can't do the best I'm going to do, then I don't want to do it. Like, yeah, I respect that. I like, like what you said, like, small little goals of like, all right, if I can do one a week, which I can handle, then do that, you know? Well, think about, this is how I look at it, too, is I was like... If it's a long-term game, even if you put up one video a week on YouTube for 20 years, it's like, and you kept sharing it, and maybe you got better at it and better at it, it's like, by the time you're not fighting anymore, you already have this platform or this audience of people that know you and know what, yeah. you're, know what you're made out of because you, you share yourself, you know, and it's just like, that's kind of a good thing. You have a community that you built around, like, what you're trying to do. It's like a... It's it's a lot of work, you know, and maybe the fact that I'm 35 and, like, on the later end of my skate career, but I still am, like, I love it, dude. I'm, like, this is so cool. Like, I'm obsessed with all that stuff. But I respect anyone who doesn't want to do it, like, because it's so much work, and it's, like, I don't know. Sometimes just working is the best feeling, like, being in the back yeah. and grinding away and not having to worry about any of the nonsense, you know? But it's yeah. weird because, like, that's the thing with being sponsored or the dream. The dream doesn't pay for itself. It's, like, there has to be a balance in it, you know, like... Yeah. I feel because like I went from sponsors paying me to no no paycheck to me just like building platforms and trying to keep it going for myself and others you know and then like yeah. it's and I'm that's, still in that tough, man. I'm in that it's trenches fucking, <laughs> it's fucking tough man and like you know for fighting like 35 is old for fighting you know like yeah so I'm at I'm at like the later point in my career because I started it much later you know like they want to sponsor 20 year olds you know because those are the guys you get the most amount of like work from yeah 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 you know like so so those guys are getting pushed those guys are on the main card on tv like you know the 30 year old dudes are going to be kind of you know more to open the card and shit like that so it's like you really got to do something to stand out and and kind of add value to your name you know and i don't know like like i said i've thought about it so much man like i have all these sick ideas I know a lot of like really good people that could really help me out. And it's like, I just let fear kind of get in my own way, you know, where I'm like, ah, I don't want to be corny or I don't want to be this or I don't want to fail. And Nah, you already have all the, you already have good characteristics and the skills and you, you already have a sick name, Spicely. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you know, got... like uh, Jerry Seinfeld, you ever watch Jerry Seinfeld's like thing? Yeah, I love it. It's like, it's fucking nothing, you know, it's just like two dudes hanging out, but you're like, all right, I like Jerry Seinfeld. I fucking like the people he has on the show. So yeah, I'm gonna watch it. Yeah. And I like I like old cars and I like fucking coffee. And it's just like fifteen minutes and it's hella, like it's sick, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought about you. I was like, well you're you could show fighting and skating like two shows because you have you have multiple things you like, so like, you know, you go skate one week and then you mix it with some training and fighting or something. Cause I would love to I just like to watch that, it'd be sick. <laughs> Well, fuck, man. Now I've got a lot to think about. You know, so. <laughs> don't feel pressured. I've tried to pressure everyone. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't. I don't feel pressured. But like, like 
So I don't have a job. Like, I just fight. That's like, amazing. I'm not right now. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just chilling. And I, I do other stuff. Like, I like to grow vegetables. I like to fucking... What? I'm really... I'm super into gardening, man, and growing vegetables. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> so, like, you know, like, right now, it's, like, in Montreal, it's wintertime. I can't do that. So, like, I try to learn French. I try to, you know, I do uh, new stuff. I just try to learn things, you know? Yeah, of course. Um, so, like, uh, this is something that I've always been into. Like, do you know who Forrest Griffin is? Yeah, fighter, right? He's a super, like, famous fighter, retired Hall of Famer dude. You know, like, him and I were talking about doing, like, a little talk show thing, like... Sick. Uh, and we were just, like, I just, like, ah! I just never, like, fucking commit to it, because I'm just, like, I don't want to be weird or corny or... Yeah. So, I don't know, man. It'd be cool. I've talked to Chase about it, dude, like, about filming stuff or, like, editing for me, and, like... I don't know, it's, like, it's tough to kind of go all in. Like, it's, like, oh, it's cool to have all these ideas and, like... But if I don't have to put them out there, I don't have a chance to fail it, you know? Yeah, you got to start small. You got to start with inch, inches and work your way up. So it starts with, like, maybe once a week on your story, you show yourself gardening. Because that's pretty fucking sick, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I love gardening. But like, with, but, like, with gardening or, like, so I got really into, like, buying old cars and fixing them, even though I didn't know anything about it. What? Sick. But, but like, what I would do is I would just buy a car and fucking get the, the user manual and then just try to figure it out. With a, it, and, like, it took me, like... I, I rebuilt this car in like a year, but it took me forever because I didn't know what I was doing. You know what I mean? And what I kind of car? So much trial, an old Volkswagen. What? Um, you, you put it back together and got it going? Yeah. Damn. Like, I, I bought it completely broken, like hadn't ran in like a couple years, like filled with water, had all this damage, like, and I was like, all right, dude, like I'm going to figure it out. And like, that's the kind of shit I'm into is like, like with, if I'm going to do a video vlog, like I'm going to just do it and try to like, I it's hard for me to like think about things and be strategic because I just want to dive in. Yeah, it might even like be I, better. It might even be better if you don't even show any of the fighting because your fighting is like what you put out there and it's promoted for you. So maybe it's just all the like behind the scenes like shit, like building a car or like car. That's yeah. pretty sick, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've that yeah. I've dreamt of that. Like I know nothing about cars, but I've dreamt of like getting a car and like taking it apart and seeing how it all works and try to figure well, it out. That's what I wanted to do when I was, like, a kid. Like, I used to think about it. So, like, when I got older and got a little bit of money, I was like, dude, I'm fucking doing it. Like, <laughs> I have all this free time. Like, I'm, I'm training. Like, I should do something productive, you know? Like, yeah. so I just, I would just train all day and then, like, work on this car all night. Like, and that's what kind of made me feel good, you know? And, like, that's how I felt about gardening. Like, I didn't know anything about gardening, what to plant, how to plant. Like, I just planted a bunch of shit and did trial and error and then like over time i learned how to do things properly and like i'm just like that's what i'm into you know like diving all the way in and then refining it later instead of like you know the same thing with fighting like i just dived in i didn't know what the fuck i was doing yeah and then i like over time you refine it you, you just work at it and it becomes natural you know yeah that's that's sick man and maybe it's something that you know because you're you're fighting so your fighting's going to build you a following which is awesome and then maybe that's something you focus on later in your career when you like really can put more time into it because the idea i guess is to age gracefully right so you can like yeah. it's same with skating it's like you want to age gracefully and still have it in your life in some capacity and like um so yeah that's because a, it's, it's gonna end you know like yeah. you're not gonna you're not gonna jump down shit forever like you're not gonna fucking skate big rails forever like one day it's gonna be like your body's not gonna let you fucking do it your knees are gonna be fucked up your back's gonna be fucked up like yeah. so you have to have it in your life somehow you know like and i this is something that i love forever like i'm gonna do it forever yeah so you gotta like figure out a good positive way to keep it in your life you know where like some dudes can't let it go and they're bitter about it and they're just like fuck man like i'm pissed that i like never did you know i, I regret all the stuff i did or didn't do and are you talking about skateboarders a, or fighters? I'm, Same. Both, man. <laughs> yeah. both. Like it's a small window. You know that. It's a tiny window. Like maybe five years where you're like really killing it, you know. You gotta do what oh, you you gotta do what you've been willing to do, which is like submerge yourself as soon as you fell in love with it and fucking make it your whole world. You have, you have to do that yeah. with skating or fighting. You have to, but, like, to, to think make about money. How long it took you to get to where you wanted to go, you know what I mean? And yeah. then you have a short window after that. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You fucking grinded so hard to get you know, sponsored by New York and get a board out or shoes, you know what I mean? Like, and you got to fucking capitalize on that, like, tiny five-year window or whatever, you know? Yeah, it's gnarly. And there's some dudes that can have careers for a super long time, but, like, most people have a short two- to five-year career. Like, fighting is very finite, man. Like, in like I fought eight fights before I got signed, which is a lot, you know? That was four years of, like, training, not making any money, 
you know, like not sleeping a lot, like being sore, working a job, like, and then like, I've only been fighting in the UFC for two years and it's like, fuck man, like it, it could all be over, you know, like you've got to really monetize that and, and capitalize on it. And it's just such an interesting thing, you know? Yeah. 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 You can't let that like kind of fuck with you either. You know, it's like, but it definitely, if you think in small increments, like one a week or even whatever, and just something that you would enjoy putting your time into, you could just start building up a platform, which you never know what could it could be used for, you know? Yeah. Crazy. I mean, some people, like I said, they just like naturally will put that shit out there and, and get a big following and can make good money, you know, doing podcasts, doing blogs and shit. And, uh, I, I love when I see that. Like, I, I'm so hyped on Brennan Shaw because I didn't like him as a fighter. I didn't think he was great. <laughs> And um, did you see that there's an interview with uh, Joe Rogan where he tells him, like, look, dude, you need to stop fighting. Like, you're not yeah. an elite fighter. Like, you're getting hurt, and I love you, and I worry about you. And uh, I think you need to do something else, you know? Yeah. And, and Brennan's like, what are you talking about? Like, no fucking way. I'm doing this. And it's hard to see that. Yeah. It's hard to be like, hey, man, like, you're not going to be a pro skateboarder. Like, you're not going to fucking make it. And uh, for me, it was like I realized that and was like, okay, I'm going to put my efforts into something else while still loving skateboarding, but I'm going to let it go. Like, I'm going to let the dream go, but turn it into something positive and not just be bitter and pissed and like, oh, fuck, I never made it. So I'm like bummed out, you know? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard because you've, I think what you've gained from skating has helped you in another area as well. So it's like, it's always tremendously. A yeah, it's like. <laughs> I feel the same. Like you, we started this whole podcast off just talking about how skating kind of set you up for that, and it's the same with me. It's like it, it's the same with everyone who skates. Is it kind of gives you the tools to be to like make the shit happen in this world, the way this world's going. It's for whatever reasons. I feel like skateboarders are made for this time and era. I, I completely agree, man. I mean, you have to be. It's like the toughest thing to do because you're doing it for the love, and you're fucking, you know, putting your body through hell. Yeah. And, like, think, I mean, so many people can't understand it because they're just like, you're not getting paid. Like, why are you doing that? You're not doing this. Like, you're just fucking breaking boards and hurting yourself. And But, like, if you break a board, like, you're going to do whatever you can to get another board. You know what I mean? Yeah. What what um, what um jobs have you worked? Like, when you when you were coming up, like, what jobs were you working? Fuck, man. I worked at Whole Foods for a long time. Dude. How's that? How's that? It was good. It was super sick. Like, they were so helpful with my schedule. Like, giving me the time off to, to do fights, you know what I mean? Like, I, I worked, like, a, they gave me hours. Like, I worked at 4.30 in the morning every day till 1 in the afternoon. Whoa, weird and then one. I would, and then I would train all night, you know what I mean? Because that's when most of the training happens at nighttime, um, 5 o'clock on. So it's like if I worked at night, I couldn't train. So I, like, begged them, like, hey, can I please work in the morning? And it sucked, man. Like, I don't like getting up at 4 in the morning. Fuck uh, And I used to ride my bike because I didn't have a car. I ride my bike to work, work all day, like come back, take a nap, and then go train all night. Like ride my bike to training, which was like so. I was riding my bike like twenty miles a day. Wow, and, you're like, gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> but that—that's the fucking, that's the grind, man. Like I fucking, those are the best times of my life. Like I think about it now, like oh, I have a car, I can fucking travel, I can do what I want. Like, I was more happy. Like, I had more happiness when I was fucking riding my bike in the snow to go train. Because, like, that's just what I, you know, because I was dreaming about getting to this point now, you know? Like, yeah. It's just, like, the times when you're skating with your homies that, like, aren't sponsored. And, you know, you guys are all just hyped there for each other. Like, fucking doing what you can. Like, those are the best times, you know? Yeah. Because they're, they're just, you're out there. You're going for it. You're going for it. And you're dreaming about, like, fuck, man, I want to go on tour so bad. Like, it'd be so sick. And then those times are great, too. Like, my, my life is great now. It's much easier than it was before. But, like, man, I love that, like, gritty part of just, like, because I was fucking miserable. Like, I would, I would sleep, like, four hours a night, five hours a night, like, wake up, go to work, do a job that I don't really like doing. I have to talk to rich fucking assholes at Whole Foods, like buying organic food. Is this and, pear uh, organic? Is this orange organic? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shit like that, you know? But like, I did it because I'm like, all right, it's going to pay off one day and I won't have to do this anymore. And then it all started to come together and work out, you know? And it's like, I look back at that time and I'm like, dude, that made me who I am. Because if you have easy your whole life, like you're not going to deal with uh, diversity at all. You yeah, you're you not going to be able to fucking like, when your back's against the wall, be able to react and stay calm in those kind of situations, you know? Yeah, you definitely need resistance, some resistance in life, or you just 
can get boxed into any odd job. Man, there, there are some days where I'm like fucking tired. I don't want to do this. I'm like, I just want to fucking do, you know, I'm just like, oh, this sucks. Like I'm, I'm getting beat up. I'm sore. And then you just got to think back to like, man, this is like what I want to do. Like I, you know, I think of all the times where like I would ride my bike and be snowing, you know, and like I, I have a big backpack with all my gear on it. I'm riding to fucking Pawtucket from, from Providence to go train. Nice. And like I, I think back and like those are the fondest times I've ever had, man. Yeah, that's sick. That's your formative years, dude. That's good. That's sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. It's uh, it's totally fucking nuts. I'm hyped that uh, you're doing well, Spicer. I hy- I'm hyped that we caught up and uh, it's sick. It's sick to know you're still you, you know, because uh, I just started seeing you on TV and fucking on websites <laughs> and shit and. I didn't think you changed or anything, but it's just nice to know that you've been able to manage this transition into something else you love, and you've been able to weather the storm, and you're doing it. You're in it. It's sick. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Uh, it's the same thing. Like, I, I, I still follow, like, all your shit, and I'm, like, so hyped that all I need is where it's at. You know what I mean? You got a bunch of good dudes that are sponsored by you, and it's, like... It's like it's cool to be like, oh man, I knew that dude before, like when it was just an idea, you know. And it's been years. When was the first All I Need video? Like, dude, deep. Two thousand and nine, maybe or something like it's that. It's so like, long. <laughs> and then to see where like it's at now, because like you didn't give up, even though I'm sure like there were times where like you're losing money, you're not making money, like you're not selling boards, like you know what I mean, like. But that's the diversity you need to go through to get where you're at, and fucking you know be hyped on. on what, Life. yeah man and you 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 helped me dude because that video was where it started you know because of that video that was a turning point where it was like i was supposed to get a board for zoo york and it never came and i was just like had all i had like eight minutes of footage on top of my state of mind part and, yeah. and i was just like dude i have all i need right here i have all the homies like we could just yeah. start our own video do our own thing and that video part was like where i like that's where it all started so it's sick to know that you came out of that thing and you just are still crushing it at life means means a lot so thank you but i mean like like you put me on you know like you didn't have to have us in the video like you really helped us out you used to give me stacks of your old boards you know what i mean like i used to drive a ton and pick up like six old new york boards and they were the best boards i ever had you know and like it's like it's shit like that that like i don't know i feel like that's what really makes life you know like i just i posted on instagram about that like just my last post was about like how like, I've met so many people from different parts of the world, and, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're a good person and, like, you make all these connections, like, that's all you're going to have when it's over, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. when the fucking lights are gone and the money's gone and all this shit, like, you're going to have your homies that are looking out for you to be like, hey, man, I got a job for you here, or, you know what I mean? Like, you can come here and do this, like, if you're hurting, you know? Like, and, and that's what really matters, and that's what I think, uh, for me, that's what matters most in life, like. Uh, like I have friends that live in other countries that are like, dude, you can come to Sweden and come hang out, you know, like. Yeah, those. And, those dudes. Just a, that's just the shit that feeling. makes it. The people are the things that make it wor- worth make things worthwhile. People are. That's what I always say. I'm like, humans are like what make things worthwhile. And if everything's going digital and plastic, it's like humans aren't plastic. You know, the, the heartbeat, yeah. the heartbeat, the characteristics. The humans definitely are more valuable than things. You know, so. But, like, think about the dudes that were in skateboarding that were selfish and, like, kind of dicks and, like, you know, they were run-ended and they didn't have anything after that, you know? Yeah, they were kind of – there's a lot of people like that, and I've been that at times where you chase things for the wrong reason or, like, you have – you're going through craziness and, like, you value humans less – you know, like, a lot of people's ignorance comes from them not looking at a human. And they're looking at them like, how can I get over on this person or fuck them yeah, over exactly. or, like – or what can I get from them? Or I want their appreciation or something. It's like so crazy. We live in America too, and America's fucking wild as a country. Like it's the, it's one of the great. I mean, you're, we're, we're all competing with each other, you know. And yeah, okay, yeah, for sure. Like there's so many dudes in skateboarding. Like like this is like uh like Nick Don Pierre. Like I, Nick's a good dude, you know what I mean. But there were times where he was like such a dick to me when we were kids. So, like, really. Younger, you know? <laughs> And, like, I, I used to be like, oh, fuck that dude, you know, whatever. Fair and enough. It's like, you know, he went through some shit, and then, like, he changed his life, and I'm like, I totally don't hold that against him, because it's like, I understand, you know, like, he was going through his own shit then, and, like, no one really knows what someone's going through. Yeah. Like, uh, like uh, there was a party at his house, man, he just, like, talked shit to you. He was, like, wasted, just, like, shitting on me all night, dude, like. Wow, that's amazing. It, it, was, it was crazy, man. 
<laughs> and uh, for a long time, I was like, oh, fuck that dude, man. Like, I don't give it. You know, he was such a dick to me for no reason. Like, I was always hyped on him. and he was, But it was like, dude, he was going through his own shit. You know, like, when you're older, you realize, like, oh, he wasn't actually trying to be a dick. Like, he was just like, that's just where his wife was at the time. You know, like. Yeah. So it's uh, it's interesting, you know. It's 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 cool to like have gone through so much and like I don't know, have a lot of experience in life. Yeah, it's sick. That you don't you don't really get now with like the digital age with kind of the way shit is because you have to put out appearances, you know what I mean, on, on the internet. Or people and do. It's like, what? Or people. That's how people use it, you know. Again, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I don't think we need to use it to put on an appearance. I think the dudes that are like humble and awesome they should use it too because i it's like, i think a lot of times it's like those dickheads use the social media or whatever <laughs> and they're like the only example you know and they scare people off yeah. you're like oh gross <laughs> yeah, yeah and it's like like dude i've met conor mcgregor hung out with him and everyone's like oh dude is he an asshole in real life and i'm like no he's like the nicest dude like he just laughs all the time and you know like he he has a, a front for the world because that's like his character and gimmick you know but like He's a real person. Like, he's a yeah. real cool dude. And, like, you know, if you needed help, he'd help you out. Like, and it's it's interesting, man. Yeah, uh, he has, like, a he has like a real extreme one. I didn't even really think about him. But his, like, he's like a Muhammad Ali type where it's, like, yeah, crazy where he's, like, a character. You don't even have to see him fight anymore, probably. Yeah. Crazy. And he's, I mean, he's done it to where he's built it where he doesn't ever have to fight again. He's made enough money. He has enough sponsors. Like, you know what I mean? Where he's set. Like, he's got a fucking... He's got so much money, you know. Didn't he? he... Floyd Mayweather. Like, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. He talked himself into boxing. Floyd, he had no experience. He talked himself into fighting, and he made a hundred million dollars. You know? Holy shit! <laughs> like, which anyone would do, you know what I mean? Like, he wasn't gonna win that fight. He didn't care. It wasn't about him winning. It was just getting to that point where, like, all right, I made enough money to be set for life now. Like, I don't yeah. have to fight. He doesn't ever have to fight again, you know? Yeah, you were kind of talking and, about uh, that before, like when you hit like a peak. It's funny because, like, in life, it's, like, you can work really hard and you can get what you – you can chase after something, like, have a dream and you can earn it. And then it's, like, what do you do after you're at, you're at the top of the mountain, you know? It's probably, like, how you yeah. – f- it's probably how you felt when you won, like, eight fights and then you took your first loss. You're kind of, like, oh, this is the downhill trick. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the whole thing. Like, when you lost your sponsors, it's, like, okay, what do I do now? Do I fucking be bitter and bummed and, like, wallow in it or do I turn it into something else? Like, yeah. I, I lost my first fight, dude. I, I had never – losing i was like this is never gonna happen to me like i'm gonna I, you know ideally you want to win every fight like i've just won eight in a row why king, would i lose now king of the and world I'm, and i'm like i'm like fuck man like i was just depressed for like a, a month you know like i just ate donuts and fucking treated myself like shit and then it's like all right am i gonna do this forever or am i gonna fucking turn it around and like go back to training and win the next one you know like you could have just fucking been bummed and hated skateboarding and hated the world and fucking done nothing and pissed away your savings, or you could have fucking turned it into something positive, you know? Yeah, yeah. I've, I, t- I felt tempted to do that, though. It's like a hard... Of course! Yeah. Of course. <laughs> it's hard, man. Why, why would you feel betrayed like, by the thing you love, you know? Yeah. Of course. You put your, your heart and soul into it, and now, ah, we're not going to put your board out anymore. We're not going to pay you, and you're like, oh, fuck. Like, I got angry. That's what made me angry, because I started thinking about it, and I was like... I was like, dude, wait, all those times, all that great times with all those people I love where we're sweating and we're skating, we're filming, these people are filming, shooting photos of me, my, like all my homies that are team manager, brand manager, we're all working together, building this skate team and doing all this cool shit, and then all of a sudden when, when the money's not there, they cut the actual heartbeat of the brand, and I was like, got angry, because I was like, I was like, how could they take away like what we earned, you know, because I wasn't even thinking about titles, I wasn't even thinking about like being a pro or anything, but I was just thinking about what what those things meant to me and what meant to me yeah. i was thinking about the people because i was like oh all those people made that happen like my friends like you were saying earlier like people helped you out and got you to the position where you could live that dream you know so it's like it's hard when you're like fuck that's you know they can just that's take over, yeah. they take it all away it's like nah i don't think so i just got mad i'm like all right we're gonna do it ourselves like independent time let's figure it out like yeah <laughs> that's what we got to do you know like because exactly, if, if the people that own your industry they don't they don't do what you do like if if there's no fighters at the top of the thing making the choices you guys are fucked yeah. you're fucked you're fucked Exactly, and you just like with skateboarding, you were like there was New York was bought out by somebody else, and like yeah. didn't have skateboarders running it, and they, they don't give a fuck about you. They don't know like not at all. <laughs> You're a number. They, they care about money, like yeah. and, and that's 
it's hard to like realize that to be like, okay, this is a business. Like fighting is a business. You know what I mean? Like they can't just pay you because they like you. Like you gotta, you know, it, it's tough, man. And it's tough when that ends because it's like you're pissed. Yeah. Like I wor- I worked my fucking ass off to get here, and now it's like you know you're gonna cut me. Like fuck, man. Yeah. Well, just keep keep being optimistic. Keep sharing yourself. I'm psyched you came on the podcast because I think you have more skills um than you know of or that you're willing that you're willing to admit because i think you could you could like uh carry it on further man and and i think um just keep on the path spicely because everything's leading you in the right direction if you're loving it and you're enjoying it and you're stuck in a moment with something and you don't feel like it's a waste of time that's the right place to be for sure yeah hell yes i appreciate it man it really uh it was good talking to you for sure man i know dude we're gonna have to do this more for sure yeah, yeah, I got uh, I got more stories and stuff I can tell, man. Nice. We'll, we'll give it some time, and then we'll catch up again, and we'll do it again. Sounds good, man. Um, before we go, um, if people want to check out any of your fighting, is there uh, any place you can send them? Instagram, anywhere? Uh, yeah, my Instagram is at Spice Wonder, um, and my Twitter is just at Eric Spicely, and uh, you can find all my shit there, man. Fuck yeah. Thank you, Spicely. Thank you, buddy. All right, one second. Let me just uh, stop the recording. Nice, nice. Spice Pod.